Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are in my bathroom. Um, it's gonna be a very different video today. I'm doing some stuff that I kind of normally do, but I'm trying some new things as well with my appearance. And I just wanted to show you guys what I'll be doing. So yeah, it's the new year, um, and I figured that I wanted to make some changes to my appearance. Not like permanent or anything, I'm not getting Botox. Um, I also cannot afford that. But, yeah, I just wanted to do some like general stuff that I normally do, like re my hair. If you guys haven't been subscribed to this channel since like the beginning, or you don't follow me on Instagram, you probably won't know that I don't have black hair. Um, I don't know if you can see in this light, but my blonde roots are coming through and I have to redye my hair every month or so. So I've been kind of putting that off so that I can dye it again with you guys. Um, I've also been putting off dyeing my eyebrows and eyelashes because, uh, again, I'm so blonde, I literally don't have eyebrows or eyelashes and I've been dyeing them since I was like 14 or 15. So yeah, I just thought I would do a couple of those things and make myself look hotter than usual in a short period of time. I also want to take you guys through doing some of my makeup. Um, it's not really like my everyday makeup routine or anything, um, but I just wanted to do some makeup with you guys and then we'll get dressed and then we'll go out. Anyway, let's get straight into dyeing my hair. Okay, so, whoa! Oh, shit, all right, well, damn. I've been waiting for my roots to grow out a lot. Um, I don't really know how well you can see this, but when my roots start to grow out, it looks like I'm going bald. So yeah, I have to get onto it pretty quickly, um, and normally I'll just do like a black touch up on my roots and stuff, but this time I decided to go for a different color. I really wanted to do a red, um, this is the one I'm using, it's the same brand as the black one that I use. I wasn't sure if I should go for like a semi-permanent over the top of this, um, or if I should just do another permanent, but I think that if I do a semi-permanent it's going to wash out and make me look even weirder. So um, yeah, I'm going with this one. This look was inspired by 2004 Gerard Way when he was in that phase of like dyeing the top of his head and that's it. I love that man so much. I will also be trying to cut my bangs, but it seems like every time I cut them they somehow get worse. And because my hair is like wavy, um, if it gets to a length, it just ends up like curling this way, so I need to find a way to fix that. And I am just going to go ahead and put this all over my head. I've got my Marilyn Manson shirt on. I no longer listen to that piece of shit, so this is my shirt that I use for crafty things that I don't care if it gets ruined. Um, so yeah, oh, you can see it's like changing color already. That used to be white. While I've got you guys here, um, maybe we should talk about something. Let's discuss thrift store inflation real quick because I actually wrote a whole video essay on it and then I tried to film it and it just, I, I'm just really not good at reading scripts and I'm really not good at like talking to the camera. I run out of breath really easily because I talk really fast because I'm nervous. So yeah, I had the whole thing filmed and then I watched it back and I was like, wow, that was absolutely horrible. So I just deleted it. So why don't we just talk about it in a non-scripted way right now? So I'm probably gonna be one of the first people to ever say this um, with their whole chest and I literally don't care what you think because it's not my opinion, it is a literal fact. Thrift stores haven't upped their prices because of resellers. Now when I say that, I mean that thrift stores haven't had to up their prices because there are so many resellers going in and buying up all their stock. Thrift stores aren't seeing that and going, oh my god, they're buying us out of house and home, we need to like up all the prices because we can't keep in demand with these thrift resellers. They absolutely can. They have, first of all, Thrift stores get everything for free. They get every single item for free unless they outsource wholesale sellers and stuff like that. But when it comes to thrift stores like Goodwill and Savers and Value Village, we don't have those here, we only have Savers, but like with bigger thrift store chains, they get everything for free and then they decide on a price for everything based on how many donations they get for that week or month. Um, they literally like get everything and then they weigh it all and then they decide on a price based on the weight that they have so that they can, you know, pay their employees, pay their bills, and so then this CEO can get a majority of the money. I think a lot of people forget that even though thrift stores like Savers and Valley Village and stuff come across like they're for charity and for like helping people who are in need and poor people and stuff like that, they are a business. They are 100% 
just a business. They don't have to pay for their stock again, so they're actually making a lot of money, like a ton of money, it's ridiculous. And so recently, what has been happening is through the pandemic and through, you know, TikTokers and influencers and shit, because of those people and because of TikTok trends and stuff, um, thrifting has become like super accessible it's become something that's not just for poor people or that's something that, you know, lower income people have to be like ashamed of, but it's become this like fun activity that like anyone can go and do and that's like really sustainable and that is a way cheaper alternative to buying retail clothes. I mean, that's why I do it. I do it because of sustainability and because it's fun and because it's cheaper and I can't afford retail clothes most of the time. So because it's become more accessible and it's become almost like trendy to go and thrift, the thrift store CEOs and managers and stuff have absolutely taken notice of this and they've noticed that there is like a popularity spike in the amount of people who are coming into their store. They've noticed that there's a completely different audience coming into their stores um, and like a whole different tax bracket as well. And of course, if you're a business and your main business model is to profit, then of course you are going to up prices because you know that that newer audience is more financially well off and they're doing it for fun and sustainability rather than out of necessity like some other people do. And yeah, you're going to up the prices because you know that they're going to pay them and you're going to see this as a new business strategy. I see so many people online just broadly being like, resellers are the worst, you know, they, they're, they're the reason why thrift stores are so expensive now. So like, fully put the blame on individual shoppers. I'm not a reseller or anything. I resell like old clothes and stuff that doesn't fit me when I'm broke. Um, and that's about it. But to like fully put the blame on resellers when there are like corporate millionaires running these businesses who are the ones directly behind raising prices. Like the resellers haven't walked into Savers and gone, this place is too cheap. Everything should be more expensive. So then poor people can't have access to nice things. Um, it's the CEOs that are doing that. It's the CEOs that are saying, Oh, I don't really give a shit about poor people. I literally only care about how much money we can make from this new audience and this new trend. Like, why are we so quick to immediately blame an individual for the actions of a corporate millionaire? Like, I don't give a shit about millionaires or billionaires, and especially to be blaming people in this time where we're all going through the exact same thing, we're all dealing with the cost of living crisis, we're all dealing with not being able to put food on the table and not being able to afford luxuries and stuff like that. We all should be in this together. We should all collectively be putting blame onto those corporate millionaires who just see us as dollar signs and just see, you know, people as a way to make profit. So anyway, that's like a very brief <laughs> version of the like, video essay that I wrote, I guess. Yeah, I hope you guys have kind of taken something from that and I'm nearly done with dyeing my hair now, so. Okay, so while I wait for that to kind of marinate into my skull, I'm gonna be dyeing my eyebrows. Um, this is the eyebrow dye that I have used since I was a teenager. It is the best one. So this is what my eyebrows look like right now. Um, it's not too bad. So when I like wash this off, it's probably going to be everywhere and it's gonna look really thick and weird because it takes like a day or two for it to like properly wash out. So yeah. Don't be alarmed, it does wash off. Okay, so that's eyebrows done. While I wait for all these to like set in properly, I'm going to be using my posture corrector. I recently got this like a couple of days ago and I've been using it because this is my natural posture. Really not great. So I'm gonna put this on for the time that I have to keep these on for. Along with that, I'm also going to put one of these on. They are teeth whitening strips. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that off camera. And yeah, I will come back when I'm ready to take everything off. Okay, I have returned. It is now the next day. And um, yeah, I don't know if you can see, I've like changed up the lighting a bit, but my hair <laughs> is like fully red underneath. Uh, yeah, I am really, really happy with it. I will be honest, the initial dye that I put in did not work at all. This is what it looked like when I originally washed out my hair. It was like really washed out. It was super like orange for some reason. So this is the brand that I went and picked up and used instead. It's a temporary dye, so it's like super bright. You will also notice that I have washed out the dye from my eyebrows. My lash lifting kit also arrived and I tried it out off camera. And the second that I put the like adhesive on my eye, um, my eyes started burning. So 
I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this, unfortunately. Yeah, I just wanted to give an update. This is what my hair looks like, like fresh out the shower and dried. I really love it. I feel like I'm doing Gerard Way justice. The next thing that we are gonna do is my makeup. I'm actually going to a gig. Kind of want to do like a full look for that, so you guys can come along with me while I do that, and then also pick out an outfit. Okay, I'm now gonna be doing my makeup. Um, and I've decided I probably am gonna do my like everyday makeup with my eyeliner and stuff, just because I am a little bit too tired to do like a full look right now. So I'm gonna start off by rolling up my hair. Okay, that's good enough. So first thing I'm gonna do is moisturize my face. So I use this brand called Walita Skin Food. It is really good. I've been using them for ages now. Sorry, the lighting's like jumping around so much because it's really awful in this room. Um, then I just go in with concealer. I am using like the palest shade of Mecca concealer. It's really good. It's very light. Uh, I don't use foundation because it's super heavy and I always break out. Yeah, I just shove this all over my face instead. And that's pretty much done. Sometimes I'll do another layer of concealer underneath my eyes because I have really bad eye bags. Um, yes, I do get enough sleep. I've had these exact giant eye bags slash dark circles since I was a toddler and no doctor can tell me why. I think it has something to do with my immune system because my immune system is absolute garbage. So yeah, I don't know. If anyone else has this, please let me know and we can discuss. <laughs> Next, I'm doing my setting powder. Um, I use this brand called Inglot. It is like the best translucent powder that I've seen but it is really annoying to get because there's only one store in Melbourne. Okay, that's done and next up I have eyebrows and my eye primer. So because I wear eyeliner and I also have like pretty hooded eyes, like I have pretty big creases here, um, I always have to prime my eyes and I use this one from Colourpop. This is a really great primer that I've used for a really long time and it even got to a point where it was kind of annoying how well it worked because I would come home after a day of like wearing eyeliner and try to take it off and it still wouldn't come off, so. And then I don't really fill in my eyebrows at all, um, clearly because I dyed them. So I just use this like gel to set them in place. Uh, this is also from Mecca. Half the stuff I own is from Mecca because their Mecca name brand is like relatively affordable. Oh, I also um, do a lot of blush. I really like blush, um, especially this one. It's from the brand Adorn Cosmetics. See, I don't even know where the hell I get these from. See, that's given me some color, made me look like I'm not a corpse. So love that for me. Next part is the hardest part, <laughs> the eyeliner. I've gotten very much used to doing eyeliner, but I still fuck up on it a lot. So prepare for me to completely just be overusing my makeup wipes because those are my best friend when I do these. But I literally use this. It's a brand called Tag and it is actually body paint. And this pan, has lasted me over three years now because I just use eyeliner so often that there's no point in me buying a new like pen of eyeliner every week. So yeah, three years ago, I was like, why don't I just buy a giant thing of body paint? I spray it with water and then I go in initially with this like angled tip brush that's meant for your eyebrows. <laughs> um, and I go in and I draw the lines. When I like to be a little bit fancy with it, I will sometimes like draw it into my crease. I think it's called like Batwing eyeliner, which I really love that name. Um, you'll notice that it looks like absolute garbage right now, but that's okay, we're gonna fix that up. Okay, so that's like what I kind of start out with um, as a blueprint and then I make it not look like shit. I think that's as close as we're gonna get it. Wow, I didn't have a mental breakdown over my eyeliner today. Good for me. I'm just gonna go in with my setting powder again and kind of like stamp that on there just to make sure that it stays in place. Everyone always asks me about my eyeliner and like if I have any tips or like how I get it so straight or you know, whatever. And yeah, my tip is literally just have makeup wipes or like micellar water or something because I think a lot of people assume that because I've done my eyeliner for so long, Long that I just like jip jip and it's done but no if you mess up once you just gotta fix the mistake you know just keep doing it until you get the shape that you want next we have mascara and again it's from Mecca that's like pretty much it I have my like lip liner and stuff that I also do but before I do that I'm gonna go back in with my angled brush um I have some black eyeshadow and I'm just gonna like kind of outline the inner corner of my eye just to give me more of that like cat eye sort of look I really like that look I think a lot of alternative girls who wear this look look really intimidating and I love them so much for it okay almost done um the last two steps are highlighter I do not have a real highlighter um I'm just using an eyeshadow palette and I picked the shiniest one 
And then lastly, I do my lip liner. Uh, I also always like overline my Cupid's bar because I don't really like it that much. Um, I'm just gonna do it. That's it. <laughs> um, I am also going to attempt to do my hair real quick and then I'm probably gonna get into the quickest outfit ever. <laughs> so before we get to the end of the video, I just wanna give you guys an update on my posture and my teeth. So yeah, I've been wearing the posture corrector for about a week now and already I'm feeling more natural in like standing up straight. Obviously my posture isn't like fixed or anything, but this is the difference between how it was before and how it is now. And then this is what my teeth look like before and what they look like now. My bottom row of my teeth are pretty like crooked, so they haven't been been whitened as much as my top row but still I think that there is a pretty visible difference and I will continue to use my posture corrector and my teeth whitening until I am fully happy okay I have to go like right now <laughs> so this is the full fit um I'm wearing that skirt that I am absolutely obsessed with the one that I altered um this top that I got of Depop this belt that's vintage Calvin Klein this bag from my mom's <laughs> all of this um jewelry and docks, of course, because I'm not about to be standing for the next four hours wearing heels. So yeah, that's it. Um, my fringe was once again not cooperating. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I'll figure that out later. Anyway, we are leaving now. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and I will see you on my next one. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you liked my video, then give the video a like. If you like my channel, then give the channel a subscribe. That's not what I say, but I'm really frazzled, so Thank you, bye. <laughs>